What is going on guys? It's your boy Assessor here with a video here today bring you guys a Photoshop to work at your own cool dual tone effects. Now if you guys probably know you guys probably definitely know the whole dual tone effect thing of course being most recognized by Spotify itself and their whole little cool little like you know I guess you'd say their thumbnails and whatnot for their site and stuff and whatnot I guess you would say their, their app is what I meant to say. Um, So yeah it's kind of like where I'm gonna go with this. So I'm gonna actually have three different versions of this cool like dual tone or duo tone effect. So of course the first one here is more or less that sort of Spotify look to it really and it's kind of, I'm kind of add some little I could add some little bubbles little rings and whatnot to it for you guys to like kind of make it look you know a little bit more cooler and more recognizable as that little Spotify thing um let me have of course this is the original of, by the way so I'm gonna show you guys that of course how to cut this thing out and then make sure the background is as nice and clean as possible so that way you guys capture the highlights and the shadows very very well for the gradients and then for the second one here if I zoom in right here this is a product image from razor uh, the reason why I'm using a lot of razor products here is because razor makes it really easy if you guys actually click on a product not sponsored by the way if you guys click on a product you they have like a, their own little media file or their own little media section where they have of course prick uh, pictures for people to use for media purposes and and so, of course, I choose this one right here. This is a really nice photo, of course, on its own, showcasing the headset itself and maybe even the Nintendo Switch for product placement. And then, of course, for this effect here, I would really call it just like a soft duo tone effect. It looks really, really good. It looks like it's almost like an Aurora. And this is all just done with a gradient and it looks really, really clean. It just, I don't know. I, I love I love how that looks, honestly. And then the last one here is a Razor Serene advertisement. I just po I just chose this picture itself, and uh, or Saren, I don't know how to say it, whatever. But uh, this is more like a, you've probably seen this little style out as well, but this is the kind of like the style that people go to as well to showcase, whether it be, I don't know, maybe a logo design or just something that they're trying to showcase themselves. And you can see this little quarter little, I, I guess you'd call it like a modern, like on white, little cool dual tone. I don't know what the, oh God, that was my fault, sorry. Um, <laughs> A cool little modern-esque design, I guess you would say. I don't know what the style is, but I know it's super cool, and I know a lot of people use it, so of course I chose this to showcase this right here for the third version here. And uh, yeah, so it kind of just follows the same thing with this one right here, but I'm just doing something more with this right here, as in like cutting the thing out and then showing you guys how to work with the gradients and whatnot. So hopefully at the end of today's tutorial, you guys can actually understand, I guess, all the gradients, and uh, bear with me, because your boy is so, so so tired i'm not even kidding it's 11 30 i i've been going to bed at like 10 30. i've been doing so well dude i just fixed my sleep schedule after like two months of not having more than like four hours of sleep at night <sighs> you guys see what you make me do <laughs> oh my god okay so of course i'm gonna get this thing going and as always guys 200 likes on the video you guys a secret down below i'm most likely to give away all these cool little art boards you guys can go through and have a little fun with it and uh yeah so let's go ahead and get this thing going i'm gonna start off with the first one here as the little i guess you would call it, this is like the spotify one right and I, I did try to make a little beach product uh beats by dre product placement but it didn't really work out the way i wanted to so anyway let's get this going Okay, so the first one we're going to be doing is going to be the little Spotify one, right? So this is the first one we're going to be right here, focusing on this and kind of getting this background and whatnot. And I just like really introducing to the whole gradient thing, right? So I know a lot of you guys use gradients. Some of you guys don't really know how they even work sometimes. So this is me helping you right now. So let's go ahead and do this. Original number one is what we're going to do. This is the first ARPA right here, as you can see. And we're just going to be basically reduplicating the first one right here to, as example that we showed you guys in the beginning, as well as adding a little more just so you guys can see how to make it look like that really cool sort of Spotify looking, I guess you would say like a thumbnail and whatnot, right? So first things first, how do gradients work? So I'm gonna actually start off with the gradient that we're using in today's video, which will be right here and under, oh, that's not what I meant to do, right here. And we're gonna go to gradient map and we're gonna choose the gradient that we chose. And I'm gonna go ahead and just choose, I believe it was this one. Yes, it was, all right, cool. So just in case you guys don't know, how to know exactly how gradients work, um, just so you guys are the left-hand side is shadows, right? And the right-hand side is the highlights. So whatever you're going to be doing when it comes to like, I guess you would say, usually you'll see like a black and white to start off with. Um, as you can see, the black, of course, is of course black for the shadows. And you can see the white is very, very like portrayed with a very nice, of course, white for the highlights. And so if you follow that same exact pattern when it comes to doing something like this, I'm going to be using like a really cool, like dark, dark purple. And so if you guys want to go ahead and just scroll down a little bit, you can see like the highlights uh, or excuse me, the shadows in this case, follow the same color as a color you guys are choosing for your, of course, your, I guess, you know, your shadow color as like it's uh, uh, English is sometimes a little bit hard. Um, <laughs> the shadow color is a color you're choosing right here. I would honestly make sure you guys recommend, of course, to stay around this darker area where it's, of course, more dull, more like not muted, but in the case of having maybe high saturation. So I wouldn't go right over here, right? Maybe not over here, but I would go more saturated 
and then just have of course a darker color going so make sure you're at around this area here if you go too far up you're gonna get really weird noisy and sort of very high saturated colors and you really want that whatsoever and so if I were to do this, of course, the highlight color right here, as you can see, all this, like, all the, uh, I guess, the uh, the Golden Gate logo, the Beats by Dre headset and whatnot, are going to have that highlight because this is the most highlighted, or excuse me, I guess, vibrant color in the actual photo itself. So if I were to move this around, excuse me, like you can see here, like the greens, orange, as you can see how the highlight is still working, as well as still having that purple as the actual shadow color so just so you guys know it's just shadows and highlights and just it, it, sometimes people really don't get it they just think of you know two colors mixing each other and i'm not gonna lie to you guys i was one of those people but you know just in case you guys didn't know that is a thing so i'm gonna go ahead and just use this for the gradient and <clears throat> excuse me the immediate reaction you probably get is the difference between these two things these are the same exact gradients however the first thing you're going to notice is that the background is very, very, like, it's high in saturation or high in contrast. That works really, really well for the actual dual tone colors. So what we're going to have to do is to fix that, of course, is pen tool out the actual background to get this really cool look that gives, you know, and by the way, by the, this can be used for, like, I guess you would see most of this kind of dual tone stuff when it comes to this style I'm doing for the first one here. For more, like, music, like I said, Spotify and stuff like that. So making sure you have a transparent background or having to pen tool out your background. Make sure that's not a problem for you guys because it's gonna make the effect look 10 times better and then just more just just has that quality factor to it right so if i were to go ahead and if i wanted to use my pencil i already as you can see i already have a mask here but just so you guys know i would literally just go around here and i already did this already but i'm just going to show you guys right and just really pen tool every single corner that you guys can get right just like so and then you want to go all the way around and once you do you're going to end up with a path that looks something like this right now for me what i have to do is i have to use the select inverse so that way i actually select the inverse that's on the outside of right here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply on my little uh, photo here if you guys not have it already then make sure you guys click on this right here add a vector mask it will give you guys this little thumbnail right here which is basically like a delete and erase or i guess you'd say erase and add here add and subtract um <clears throat> excuse me so in this case if i were to click on this and since i already have this all selected the background itself and if you guys don't know black on white equals it does not equal erase it equals fill in i believe so if i were to go like this that's a lie no nope, i was i was right am i right holy crap black is erase on white right okay i'm not i'm not that dumb okay so black is erase of course on white so of course your foreground color is black on the white here, like the really reason I make that say differently is because you can make this thumbnail default black to start off with, which is then of course if you add it in, you have to use a white brush. But in this case, I already have a black foreign color filled in on my little thumbnail here that is already of course white to start off with. So if I press all backspace to quick fill it in, that'll give me the option of really quickly fill in my black color that I have, and that is the foreign color that I have black as well. So if you really even want to to select it once you have it all selected, if you wanted to right click. Uh, you can't fill it in because it's not going to work. Just make sure you guys click on this. Once you click on the thumbnail, you can even use your brush and whatnot. And then you can just erase it just like so. So once you've done that, you can already see the resemblance of, of course, our actual cool little dual tone. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this look a little bit cooler in this in the aspect of having a little Spotify look to it, right? So one thing I would personally like to do is besides just adding a circle, however, we will add a circle, but besides just adding one, I'll show you guys another thing as well. So if you guys want to add a circle, of course, the ellipse tool is what you're going to be using. Now, the reason why I also told you and recommended the fact that you guys use the masking tool here is because when we're actually going to be cutting things out and make it 10 times easier for you guys to actually cut things out and just make it super, just, I guess, convenient for you, right? So I'm going to make a nice little circle here. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to make this circle right here. I'm going to make a nice little new layer here and we're going to quick fill this in. I'm going to make this foreground color white so I can quick fill it in with all backspace just like so. Let's put it above the gradient as well. There we go. So as you see, we have our circle here, right? Now I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control and click on that thumbnail we just clicked on before for the previous, uh, of course, to kind of fill in or cut out our background. And what we're going to do is I'm just press delete on our keyboard just like so. And that will make it look like the circle is actually behind the person or the, in this case, the player itself. And it looks just really, really cool, right? You guys probably, of course, start to notice how it looks like the whole Spotify thing. So if I want to go ahead and use a different shape, we're going to use the ellipse tool once again, but we're going to use the actual shape tool. That way we have the option to use fill and stroke. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to turn off my fill, which is already off, have my stroke on, make sure this is on the stroke option that is a solid line. You can make it a dotted line, but in this case, I'm going to, I think it looks cool with the solid line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just make a nice little circle here. 
Now I'm going to make sure that on this little points here, the space of the size or the thickness of the stroke itself. So if I were to just take this here and just drag this up, I'm going to drag this pretty, pretty wide. I'll say right about there and we'll just bring this out maybe around here. And what we're going to do is we're going to rasterize this layer type. That way it gets rid of the whole ellipse thing being a shape that when we do delete it, it will actually delete as a shape itself or as a whole and not as a shape and kind of give us any problems or whatnot. So make sure you guys rasterize your layer before you do this. So I'm going to do, or if you want it, so you can use the, the masking tool and have it still as a actual shape, right? Just in, just in case you didn't know. Okay. So hold control, not thumbnail again, click on the ellipse, press delete. And now we have a cool little circle going on here as well. It looks pretty dope. And uh, yeah, that's just, I think that's pretty much it when it comes to like the whole Spotify thing. If you guys wanted to, uh, one thing I playlist is like release, right, right, release radar, dude. You guys know about release radar? If you guys don't, you're welcome, release radar. Right, you guys get it. You guys, I probably are not using the right font and whatnot, but you guys can get it. You guys can see it. You guys can, of course, have that resemblance there. That, of course, that looks like that cool little Spotify feel to it. So that's just like the first one that we're gonna be doing in today's video. The second one here will be the whole little softer sort of, I guess, a really cool Aurora tone when it comes to it. But the fact that this is, it's just, it's really, really cool to have something like this. Like I said before, you don't have to always just use it for the music industry, which it is really, really used for. It's really driven in the music industry. So if you're looking for or a cool music header or having just something that looks really cool and music oriented for your banner designs for your website whatever a case may be it's a really good advice i would probably advise you guys to use something like this really cool dual tone color with maybe a picture of yourself or just something that looks really really nice aesthetic because once you have this dual tone effect the immediate reaction you're going to get from people is music right that's kind of like the whole factor when it comes to this right here or music or get someone's attention kind of thing that's how i see it so anyway i'm going to go ahead and just kind of like say this is already done and over with because we kind of already stepped away from all the basics and when it comes to the whole gradient and of course having our circles making our circles look all cool and whatnot and then bringing them in the foreground or background and if you guys of course want to um let's just say if we want to add a circle in the foreground what i would just really do is just literally just add a new circle excuse me and add a new layer and then add a circle and the foreground just like so that way it kind of looks like things are going of course in front of the actual character or in, in front of the actual uh the player itself or whoever you are right and of course having also things behind it that way kind of has a really nice dynamic feel to it right so just so you guys know that is how we're going to be doing that over there did i spell that right i think i did okay so secondly right is going to be this really cool little uh, i would say the aurora effect right so let me just get one more little zoom in so you guys can see the difference as you can see there's no real sort of color going on here so it's no you can't really pinpoint the fact that it is of course it is razor you can see the razor products so you can see the product placement very very well taken photo of course however it just kind of all kind of blurs and comes together. Uh, the text itself is probably unnecessary for the fact, but the fact that you have this really cool green tint, and then I really have this really more focused green tint on the actual Razer headset itself. That way you kind of connect everything to the Razer headset. I think it looks pretty freaking cool. Honestly, as you can see, I, I think I did a pretty good job on that. I'm not gonna lie. All right, so secondly, I'm gonna go ahead and work on this. We're just gonna go ahead and just jump over to that really now, or right now, excuse me. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy that first part. Let's go ahead and go to the second part though. All right, homie. So the second part now is going to be this really cool sort of like Aurora kind of effect kind of thing going on here. So, of course, like I already showed before, we're going to go ahead and just start off with this little original image here for the number two. And the first thing, of course, I'm going to start off with again is going to be the gradient itself. Now, of course, I have it already preset. We're going to go to gradient map here. And um, right, I believe it was this one right here. Um, yes, it was, but we have to revert it because we want to, of course, our shadows and then our highlights. And so one thing I actually mentioned, this is a nice little quick tip for you guys is when you're working with someone as, uh, I guess you would say, if you're working with something that has some sort of features, some, I guess a person itself who has features in his face and whatnot, you want to make sure you're not washing them out. Now, let me show you guys an example of what I mean by that. I have a really nice, of course, a uh, green to sort of, uh, uh, bl bluish kind of ratio here, which would look really good. That like kind of looks more like that Spotify feel. If I if I of course did that for the first one here, but <clears throat> excuse me. What you can see here in the middle here is sort of this little, uh, I guess you would say this like, yeah, it was called the color midpoint, but I would just kind of call it like the balance between the, uh, I guess you would say the, the, of course, the shadow and the actual highlight itself. So if I were to move this to the left, uh, we're gonna just see 
All right, I'm just gonna move this little dot to the left. You're gonna see that we're gonna be losing a lot of features here. So you might find yourself with the colors that you choose. Of course, you saw me when I actually kind of messed around with having different colors and choices and whatnot before that you kind of saw that some colors just does not work together, right? So in this case, maybe other colors are gonna have like the same, of course, nice tones when it comes to this green and this blue. But one thing you wanna make sure is that you're not getting rid of any of the facial features and the facial structures themselves of any kind of personnel that's in the actual uh, photo itself so if I move this more to the left we're gonna get the more shadows kind of coming in and making sure we're not losing any of those features and we're also not washing out their face like right now if I was looking at the forehead right you can see how it just gets really washed out when you start moving towards the right nice and slow you can start to see that we're gonna lose in that shadow there because what's gonna be happening is the green basically is over uh, overtaking the blues when you move that dial more towards that right hand side whatever color is more dominant will be having that more space between this midpoint here so if I want to move this to the left I'm gonna find that nice little midpoint, right? I'm gonna say, <laughs> like, where's this kind of that perfect sort of ratio where you kind of get all those nice features here, so you can see all the shadows here still. And I would kind of say that this is pretty good right here, right? So I'm gonna press OK, and I'll say that is our little little little, little tip, I guess you can say, when it comes to the whole highlights and such like that. But one thing I want to mention as well is, of course, don't forget blend modes are a thing, right? So if I go to normal, go to dissolve, if I just want to scroll through really quick, you can see blend modes are still a thing. You might see something in here that you really might like that kind of inspires you guys to try something out differently when it comes to gradients. Like this looks really, really cool, really intense. It has a really nice soft light with this gradient here. I'm not going to lie about that. I even actually flipped through that when it comes to my, uh, when it came to my first one. The hard light itself just looks pretty, looks badass as well. Um, just overall, you can see just a whole bunch of different things, right? But the one that I use in today's video is going to be Multiply. Now, the reason why I use Multiply is because it has a really nice ratio when it comes to sort of, I guess you would say, kind of making our shadows look a little bit more cooler, and as well as giving it that kind of, this weird tone of like depth in the color itself. I don't know, when I use it myself in my pro, um, my actual like banner designs and whatnot, I find myself sometimes duplicating the entire thing. And then you guys try it yourselves. You might have a banner design you're working on right now as we're like watching this video. Just take the entire group, duplicate it, put multiply on, lower the opacity just a little bit, and just see what happens. And I want to, I want to, I want to share that little secret with you guys. It's really, really cool sometimes. The little thing that you get. Anyway, what I'm gonna do immediately after having this on multiply on this gradient map, I'm gonna just drop my opacity down about 50%. Now, as you can see, you kind of see this whole little uh, ratio tone here that we're gonna have that same exact sort of. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, like this like weird sort of nulled or dulled out or sort of like grayed out, not grayed out, but sort of just muted more color here, right? But it still has that really cool dual tone effect that you can still see that nice green and like that more darker green, right? I think we have that or more of a blue, right? Yeah, so like more of a blue for the highlights. So if I just change this to black really quick, you can see that there is, excuse me, the, uh, the shadows here. Change this to black, you can see that it does mess things up. As you can see here, his arm has more of that like bluish tint, but if we did make it black, it, ha it gets rid of it. So I promise you guys having those little, little fixtures and that little nice green tint or purple tint or whatever hue that you choose for your shadows, it does make a difference. So make sure you guys, of course, test it out, try it out yourselves. <clears throat> now, one other thing now is, of course, this is basically the same thing as having a astral mask when it comes to your racing and stuff. Gradient Maps has that same exact thing already, like automatically, right? So you don't have to actually use and use this actual little mask here. You have to actually put that in. So if you were to click on this little thumbnail here, uh, thumbnail here, use a brush here. Let's just gonna use a soft brush. Make sure your hardness is all the way down at zero. And we're on a white background. So if I use color in black, as you can see, it will of course make it kind of erase. It'll erase the color itself. Now, if I wanted to fill it back in, if I just change my color back to white, by the way, both these colors will be demanded or sort of defaulted in there when you, of course, right as, you, as soon as you click on this thumbnail. So if you click over here, you can see my color switch. As soon as I click on this thumbnail, it's always going to be black and white, so you don't have to worry about that whatsoever. But if I, of course, make it a white background, on a white background, we're just going to actually fill things in. <clears throat> so one thing I wanted to mention for you guys is using the actual opacity tool when it comes to your racing, your brushes and whatnot. So if I were to go over here to the top left of my screen here, I'll take my opacity and just drop it down to about 20% just like so and if i go in here now with a black brush which basically means i'm going to be racing now on this gradient if i just take this you can see that we can make sure that we kind of balance and sort of actually kind of how do you say uh fade in or fade out the color of the gradients and so so if i want to have his face still be that really cool uh color that he has going on right now already right or that has that um, what i mean by that is just like the sort of uh the actual lighting when it comes to the actual photo that was taken 
right? If you want to have that green hue still there, maybe you want to have some of his jeans be a little more faded in, right? So if I click one time, it's only gonna be 20% of passive. If I click again, you can start to see, it's just gonna, you can have, you basically you can click all the way up to, uh, to a 100% opacity, right? So that's like the whole thing about it. So if I were to just click once, it's not automatically taking away the entire actual gradient itself. It's giving me sort of step-by-step -step sort of, uh, I guess you would say ratios to actually fix myself and uh, really get these nice little tones going out. So if I were to wanna kind of mess around with the, I guess the run here a little bit, around there a little bit we can get that really really nice feel where it's just not as boring as it's like sort of you know kind of clear just color whatever the like, whole color scheme of this it, by the way i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not bloating on the actual picture itself the actual product picture is really really cool and i'm gonna lie about about that the shadows the lighting is really cool so props to the photographers i know a lot of photographers out there and esports and whatnot they they do a lot of work i'm not gonna lie so I just want to say it just wasn't boring, but it kind of has more color. It just makes it look, it has a mood to it now. It has a really nice mood to it. So if I want to keep on going, the pillow itself might need to be a little more out because it's just a little too much. I kind of feel like right here needs to just kind of fade out just like so. <clears throat> and then his arms just like, let's get rid of all the green in his arms. So all, right, all this is just coloring it with black as you can see, right? So. As you can see there, it just kind of just has that really nice cool aurora. When I think about aurora, I mean like lights kind of like surrounding it, but not just like physically there in a sense. It just looks really, really cool in my opinion. I think just having that little knowledge about, you know, lowering your opacity down your eraser or your brush, whatever one you're gonna use, because you can use the eraser on this, but you just have to change the color to actually white, right? So if I have a white on white, then that would actually start erasing. Just so you guys know, it's, it's kind of weird. Just basically whatever opposite color you have on black, on white, it just depends on which kind of brush or eraser that you're using. So that's kind of like my whole deal about this here. It's kind of like a really cool soft tone, dual tone kind of effect here. It looks really, really good for something who just kind of like explore a cool product design and just really have a nice cool look to it when it comes to uh, having this really nice color surrounding it. What might, you know, because I, I, I chose green for a reason. It's the Razor logo color. So yeah. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the second one there. I'm not gonna add the whole text in here. That's whatever. I didn't really want to add it the first time, but I just thought it would eh, make it look cool and different, right? So that is a second one. The third one is gonna be this right here. I'm gonna be having a. I'm not gonna do a tutorial on this entire little concept here because I'm actually gonna be doing a banner tutorial design on this because I think it looks really cool and I have ideas, of course. And I'm gonna be using a gradient in there. So if you guys watch this video, you guys gonna be killer. And of course, you know, uh, I guess you'd say creating the other one, right? So I'm gonna actually just jump right into this one right here. And this is more or less just kind of me showing you guys, I guess in the light of having really cool uh, shadows and highlights in this picture here i chose that for a reason as you can see of course the highlights here highlights here shadows shadows you can kind of really see the actual difference right so i'm going to show you guys really quick if i go to original number three that is this right here go into my gradient maps just like so now i'm going to show you guys with this one for one right i think it was yeah it was this one right here where I have three different colors. You can see orange, you can see purple, and you can see yellow. I think this is a really, really cool one. It's kind of, it's it kind of hurts my eyes a little bit to look at it all the entire time, but you cannot lie. If you were scrolling down something, right, and you can just, you know, you whatever you're like scrolling down on a website or whatnot, and you see this hue, this dual tone color, this orange really cool color and whatnot, and the color scheme itself, that's gonna catch your eye no matter what. And it, just, it doesn't even have to be so pretty sometimes, you sometimes you just want to have that attention that hey this is right here like this is this is me like this is this presentation i want you to click on this and regardless i believe this will come out 10 times out of 10 ah, let me be honest like let me seven times out of 10 that people will click on this because it, that's the first thing they saw that's the first thing that catch their eyes and you can't lie and tell me that this wasn't the first thing that caught your eyes honestly at least for some of you guys so this is me kind of telling you guys as well that of course if i just change i don't want to change this around a little bit so i can show you guys a little bit more Let's just say this is on green and whatnot, right? And for this orange here, right? We can have the orange be the mid-tone. So I'm gonna have this one be a, let's just make this one like, almost like a, mm, we'll take that for like a green lime green. And then having this as a yellow, maybe this right here, if it was more of a, I want it to be more of a different color, you can never really see it, right? You can start to see the hues do change a little bit more. There we got that purple. So we have purple, a green and kind of a yellow here. So we can use three different colors. And the fact that it kind of just, it kind of like works with something like this, right? Because you have all these highlights and shadows in the actual picture, just because it just, the lighting itself just kind of highlights both of those really, really well. But in this case, I did use, I believe it was this one right here. 
uh, I believe we had to reverse it though, right? I believe it was that one, right? Okay, so if I were to click on this again, now I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna as well as show you guys really quickly is um, sometimes not always about washing things out when it comes to actual facial structures, but sometimes you're doing a product design and maybe you wanna really highlight and just give it that really cool, I guess that glowy kind of feel when it comes to the highlights. So if I were to take this, move it more towards the right, It'll give my highlights more of a little look to it but if i move it over here you can see this is washing all the highlights out we don't want that whatsoever i'm going to take this little midpoint here and let's just drag it more to the right kind of get that nice nice color right just like something looks pretty good press okay press okay again but the reason why i showed you guys of course this one here it's kind of does follow the same exact one as the first one here but little tips that can show you guys more and it has more kind of i guess uh examples in this photo right here so hopefully you guys do kind of understand what i'm trying to go for and what i'm trying to show you guys and what i'm really like learning myself as well like all this knowledge right here i have going on today myself was just like a couple of hours of me messing around with and just really trying to figure out the whole thing about gradients because for one thing i don't think i use them enough but i have been using them rarely uh, when it comes to like my, I guess like, you know, the whole NDA stuff, but uh, I can tell you guys that sometimes they want, or whoever you're working for, a company just wants to show things off and doesn't always want splash, 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 stock, stock, stock. Sometimes they really just want something nice and clean and just attractive and that just gets clicks, right? So sometimes that is a gradient that happens to be something maybe that looks like this, right? So hopefully I save you guys some time, save you guys the hassle, save you guys the revisions of revisions of revisions of people who are looking for something that looks something like this. You might not know, just give them the example. Be like, hey, what about a gradient that looks like this? What not, you might actually catch their interest and probably save a couple of hours of your time, a couple of days of your time sometimes of uh, just companies looking for something, right? And so, I think that pretty much concludes my tutorial here today. Like I said before, I'm gonna do like a, a thumbnail or some banner design of this. Um, simplistic, of course. Um, so yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It was more of just me trying to improve. I've been doing this like a little improve series, like improving your text effects, improving your gradients in this case. And I don't know what the next one is, but you of course you can comment down anything you want to see me do uh, below, right? Just tonight, right now. You can do that right now. Um, to like the video equals a signal down below. 200 likes on the video is what I said. Equals a signal down below, which will be the most likely. PSD of this video here today. This PSD actually has all the sort of things I'm gonna have. I'm not gonna save it for uh, what I have right now. What I will go ahead and do is kind of like revert it back to what I have, like the original photos and then the little stock photos I have here now, right? So that way you can kind of mess around with and almost duplicating copy if you guys wanna go ahead and give it a shot. As well as I have the description down below is the, th uh, the grades that I use in today's video. So if I were to click on this and please, all right, that's, please. Please let me click on this. There we go, right? So all the greatest that I have here, I'll probably make a little pack. I believe I can, right? So yeah, of course I can. I'll give you guys all the little uh, greatest that I did use in today's video. That way you guys can have them as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Thank you guys so much for bearing with me. Um, I know I was a little bit off today, but <laughs> it's because your boy, it's, it's, <laughs> I would sleep, I would be sleeping right now. <laughs> Oh, it's actual sadness coming out. Okay. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sesso HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys, even if it's 12 o'clock. And sometimes, sometimes it's not even late for you guys. Sometimes you guys, I know you guys are out there for 3 a.m. I feel you, bro, but sometimes I need my sleep. I love waking up at 8 30, dude. Okay. I love you. Peace out.